Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we're going to check out Emery Brawl. I love Emery Lurker of the Lock, and I really enjoy the Brawl deck. You are confined to mono blue, but you get to play with all kinds of sweet artifacts, and it's a really fun strategy. Before I dive into, you know what? I don't, I don't know how to cover Brawl decks, really. Talking about every single card seems like a lot to talk about, and just kind of showing it to you is nice. But I will try to dive in. This might be a long intro as I get my footing for how to talk about Brawl decks, because they have so many unique cards. But a little housekeeping. I've put up some content. Um, I, I've been in the process of trying to record a lot of content, both for the Color Challenge, the channel, the Free to Play, and the Monday Meta Update that some of you may have seen. And I make some videos and I play with some decks that just don't cut it. They just don't make it. But every now and then they also have good games and it actually pains me to cut them from the rotation. So when that happens, I have started making a practice of putting up the sweet games for the members on the YouTube channel. So there is a button there that says uh, members or get a membership or join on your YouTube channel. Uh, window if you look down there it's 4.99 a month and you will get some extra content you'll also get first access to content i upload early like right now i've already uploaded an ayara brawl video but i haven't made it public yet and my members get to watch that for about three or four days before everybody else so it's for the biggest fans if you have the money and you feel like supporting the channel um i it would mean a lot to me. It helps me do more and make more content and get it out there. So uh, very appreciated. It also, whenever I get money, Mrs. CGB Cover Gogina gives me permission to spend more time playing Magic and making more content for you. So it's a part of the fun. There's also some bonus content on Patreon. And if $4.99 for a YouTube membership is too much, there are memberships on Patreon for $2. And the content there it, that I posted for them is unique as well. So as you see, I spend a lot of time recording. Not everything makes it into a proper video because I try to give you the elite, the best of the best here on the channel. But every now and then there's a sweet game that I want you to see. And I've been making a habit of putting some content up for patrons and some content up for members when I have that content. So into the deck, what are we up to here? Uh, Emery, the Lurker of the Lock. The coolest thing is that the spell costs one less for each artifact you control. That's even if your Emery has died a few times and starts to cost more and more. As long as you keep playing your Emery and your artifacts, then you keep on getting more and more artifacts like out of your graveyard. Emery still costs a very low amount. I've had this die about 10 times and still only cost one mana if the game is going well enough. The rest of the deck, we have a little bit of an aggressive slant, but it's not the aggro artifact deck. You only get one Steel Overseer, and that's a pretty key card in going aggro. What it really is, is a big mana value deck. You just don't really know it, but we have a whole bunch of mana ramp, like Signet, and we have... Heraldic Banner, Geode, we have Midnight Clock. So we have these mana rocks that we play, often with Emery. We have a bunch of Scry and Draw Engines, and we get to keep on putting blockers in front of our opponent and replaying them with Emery. And then as we get later into the game, we can kind of hold up these counter spells while still improving our board. So we keep on getting a little bit of value and playing more artifacts but we also get to start holding up Negate and Tails End and Essence Capture on around turn five or six because of our mana rocks. And then as we get really late into the game, we turn that big mana into big plays with Gadwick the Wizened, Mass Manipulation, Agent of Treachery. There's a Shimmer Dragon, which is this awesome hexproof card that can draw you a bunch of cards with all your artifacts on the battlefield. And we have Meteor Golem, and we have this combination with Witch's Oven and Meteor Golem so that we can just blow up the opponent's best permanent non-land permanent every single turn with Emery, Witch's Oven, and Meteor Golem. Witch's Oven, sack the Meteor Golem. Emery, target the Meteor Golem, recast the Meteor Golem. It's a very fun, kind of wacky end game. The deck is definitely a blast. It can beat very good decks with perfect draws. It has trouble against anything that gets out too fast. And of course, if Field of the Dead is on the battlefield, you better have your Agent of Treachery right away, or it's all going to go downhill. But I, it's a 10 out of 10 in my heart, and I really love playing this deck, and I'm excited to show it to you. So let's dive in and let the Emery Brawl nonsense begin. Ooh, Tezzeret. It's going to be a battle of the artificers. Yeah, this is 
just about anything with the several artifacts is great. This is great. Like this is this is plenty fine. Having mana rocks is good. Whatever we mill with Emery is going to be nice. Scrabbling Claws Emery is pretty good. Um, as far as interacting with other artifacts, I don't think I really have the tools, but we'll see. We'll put it to the test. Hmm. I'm going to play the other one next turn anyway. I was trying to think of any possible advantage to Witches of in this turn instead of the Claws, but Claws might exile something, and our opponent's going to open on the Well. I love the Well. I wish I had the Well right now. I would go straight back to the Well. Scry both to the top. Okay, I'd mill you if I freaking could. We also drew the Mystic Sanctuary, which is sweet. If we mill a good spell like Mass Manipulation with Emery, Sanctuary gets it back. And we see a Guild Globe. There's an Unsummon. We lost our Shimmer Dragon. That's a little bit unfortunate, but it's the way it goes. Maybe Midnight Clock will bring it back at some point. Renowned Weaponsmith. That is a that is a breaker of a card. Like That card would be amazing. That's amazing when my deck has it. This is awkward. I really want to play the Overseer. I also really want to play a Globe from the Graveyard. Everything about this. But, um, hmm. You know, when I look, I don't have any other artifact creature. Already in the tank. Jeez, CGB, what's your problem? Let's go like this. Let's work on ramping our mana since our opponent is doing it, and having a lot of mana available is a big flippin' deal. So I could sack the claws to draw a card, but I still couldn't recast it with Emery. I can't do anything else this turn, but yeah, we're just gonna work on our mana. Next turn we can put the unsummon on top and play Gadwick, which means we can get Gadwick back later. If we want. But yeah, look at look at this. We need a counter. We need something to stop Tezzeret. It's a six mana planeswalker, but it is on its way, and here's Mirror Maid. And what are you countering? You're countering the banner? Must be nice in an artifact mirror to have a card like Mirror Maid on your side. Our opponent has two mana open. We have a Spark Double. Spark Double's good with the Overseer. What are we on? Five mana? Maybe I don't want to get the Unsummon. Maybe I just... Mm. I don't know. That's tough. Unsummon can set this back, which a little bit of tempo might be nice. But our opponents might have six mana for Tezzeret next turn, which is pretty game-breaking. And we don't have a board presence. So I guess we need Gadwick. I'm going to decline because I have to draw better cards. Okay, Meteor Golem's ready to rumble. Not quite. We don't have as much mana as our opponent. Here comes the boss. Now this gives affinity. So our opponent's... Our opponent might just explode here. I take what I need. And zap. Here comes the laser. Ugh, I've never felt the laser. I've given the laser, but I've never been the recipient of the laser. First time for everything, I suppose. Mass manipulation. <laughs> Enter the battlefield, draw X... Cards. Whenever you cast a blue spell, tap a non-land permanent. That mass manipulation off the top, though. Do I steal the Tezzeret? Absolutely. Absolutely we do. Who would do anything else? <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, what are this what are the other abilities here? Exile the top ten cards of your library, put all artifacts among them on the battlefield, minus three, return artifact from your graveyard to your hand. Not quite good enough. Laser. Just laser. Why did it laser me? Did you see that? Did you just see that? Unacceptable. Alright. I think I just block this. I think I just hold back everything. I don't think that there's an attack here that is worth it, because if the opponent can interact with one or two creatures and hit the Tezzeret, then I don't get to ultimate it, and let's just be honest, that's what this game is really about. It's really about me ultimating this Tezzeret. But why did it laser me? Why would it do such a thing? 
Mana Geode. Yep. The opponent's like, how did it all go so wrong? I was just a boy with his Tesseract. I just wanted, or girl, I just wanted to be the one with the Tesseract. Now my opponent is the one with the Tesseract. Uh oh. Take away my card draw. You're gonna have to remember that. For example, I was gonna use Emery to recast a Guild Globe. Now I can't. Oh, okay, I can. I'm just gonna attack my opponent here. Oh, could I have done that last turn? Played a free Guild Globe out of the graveyard? That would be hype. All right. Get over there. Do this duty. All right. Let's go in here. How does this card work? Creature and Planeswalker spells have affinity for artifacts. Hype. All right. First things first. Tap your Witching Well. Copy this. Seems fine. <laughs> now we can Meteor Golem for zero, because apparently affinity stacks for reasons. Where are you going? I was going to do things. I was going to do absolutely nuts things. Feather the Redeemed. That's going to be a rough one. We are on the play with some Mana Rocks and an Agent of Treachery, so my plan is to steal this Feather. Ramp up and steal this feather as fast as I can. Usually they don't have enough protection spells, like a God's Willing or two, right? So, not two, just one. Torch Courier. Okay. Not what I expected. All the mana rocks in my opener here for Emery. Holy cow. What is this? What's going on here? Down to 23. That extra life total buff is nice. And there's a fire urchin in our bone without any planes. So they're a bit off of casting this feather right now. Do we get the clock ticking quicker or do we get a scry? Right now I really need to... Well, if I'm casting Emery, I'm just going to throw it in the graveyard anyway. So let's play the clock. And here she comes. So, give me some good ones. That's a lot of land. Oh my god, this was a floody game. But maybe Emery fixed it. No, I'll surely draw more land, right? It's the only way it could be. But we've got a gargoyle. That is a big blocker. Unfortunately, we usually end up with our hand being really low really quickly. Okay. Did you just build a mono red deck, but your feather's your commander? All right. This does get Emery gone, but that's the thing about Emery. She comes back very easily. The cost reduction still works on her, even as she takes multiple deaths as your commander. The Wizened. All right. Well, we'll keep setting up here. That Wizened is going to be nice. And that Witching Well is nice. We'll throw it in the bin with Emery. And then we'll try to get it back later with Emery. And we get a few more artifacts on the way. A Heraldic Banner. Yeah, this deck is actually much better with extra mana than you'd think. You, you're used to my artifact aggro deck. You'd think it would run out of things to do with extra mana. It really doesn't. Going up to Mass Manipulation, Agent of Treachery, Gadwick the Wizened, like... The deck does, it needs a lot of mana, and you need a lot of mana in Brawl, in general, to keep up. You need a lot going on. And there is Joust, the opponent showing that they're very good at killing my stuff. They've made no mystery about it. And they're going to get another nice attack in. Ow. Grr, arg. All right, so, clock up to four. We need another artifact for this to be shrouded. But it's probably a pretty good play. They have to get through the 5-6 and it draws me a card. That or the Gads could draw 5. I think I like that. Let's go. I think a full hand just sounds beautiful to me. Zero mana, Stone Coil Serpent option. Mm, I pass. 
No, thank you. No, thank you. So the object next turn, of course, if we get out like a golden egg, then we can play a shimmer dragon that has hexproof. Then the opponent can't mess with it. If they actually get their white source, we'll steal their feather. At least that's the idea. But let's see how they respond to the wizened. It's currently dominating the battlefield, and the opponent just says go. No answer. That is probably the turning point in this match. Here's an egg. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. I think we just shimmer dragon and stop being a coward. I don't know what our opponent would actually do to it or us. So taking the shields down a little is kind of like, uh, but there you go. Oh, I should have left up a mana rock so I could draw a card with the dragon. I'm used to using my mana rocks early, as I think I've talked about in other videos. I'll just play a little stone coil. A little stone coil can draw a card. It also helps with cast Emery for cheap. Smash. Send a message. We are now the beatdown. You are not. What will you do about the dragon? Legion Warboss. Sad when your opponent never gets the mana together to cast their three mana commander. It's just kind of painful. I feel for him a little. Feel for him a little. Nom. Feed the dragon. A dragon never loses. Sarkin. Great man. Died. Very sad. All right. Doma Legends. Gilgate. Negate. This is all completely out of hand now. It, everything has fallen apart. Emery is back down to only costing a single mana. Negate is up. I don't think it matters what we tap down here. One, two, three, four, five mana still open. So Brazen Borrower is available, Disdainful Stroke, Negate. Yeah. Eight counters now on our Midnight Clock as that ticks away. Yeah, we'll just send the Shimmer Dragon. Just let the Shimmer Dragon work on the opponent until they're ground to dust. And the scoops. Well, it was a good demonstration of what the deck can do. It was a bad showing from the opponent. Hmm. It's one of those borderline ones, but if you're watching this and hearing my voice, I decided to keep it in, basically to show what the deck is supposed to do in the best of times. That's a lot of mono blue out today. Let's go. Jace, huh? Are you the petitioner guy? Because I'm really sick of the petitioner guy. All right. I like saving the Mystic Sanctuary to get back something I mill with the Emery, since sometimes I mill some of my heavy hitting cards. At the very least, I have a Tail's End here I would love to get back. And we're opening with an Opt, because why not? Keep on top. Tome of Legends. Pretty awesome little draw engine with Emery, because it's so cheap to play her. And she can attack, so it keeps things going. Drown Secrets, why not? Another island. We could play the monitor or we could just play the Emery. Uh, all, I guess this makes it cheaper, so we'll go with that. Can be helpful against the graveyard deck. Here's M's. What do we mill? We got a meteor golem. It's a long way to go to get there. Let's leave up the options and see what happens. We also had an unsummon, which we can use the Mystic Sanctuary to stack. Don't know if that's going to matter. Queen of Ice. And you're milling yourself. So what do you do? Tap target creature. It doesn't untap. Okay. I mean, you'll have to sit for a while. What was the artifact? Meteor Golem? We weren't going to get that anytime anyway. So first of all, exile a card. Opponent possibly going with Adventure Mill. When you see the Queen of Ice, it's based on maybe a standard deck they really enjoy, the Adventure Mill deck in standard. Now, I would love to save this to get a counter. 
really, really would. Just to play a counter again and again and always keep Jace off the table. So I'm going to go with this Signet. And I'm actually not going to play my land. I'm going to miss my freaking land drop. Feels bad, but now I have the mana to counter Jace. And I can use Mystic Sanctuary to get it back. Maybe that's not a good play when you consider that the opponent has Drown Secrets. They can mill, like, if I put a land on top. But I can draw it with Tome. So if I can draw it with Tome, it's okay. Spectral Sailor. Queen of Ice getting the cast. Sure. Are you going to attack me too? No. Opponent has no plans of anything of that nature. Get that gone. Draw the card. Not a land. Still not a land. And I haven't gotten to use my counter spell. Tilting. Very tilting. Alright, well... What does Unsummon really do? Not enough. It is a good card just to have around. I'm just going to decline. Attacking puts a counter on this, which is kind of lovely. But I don't think that's really good. Put out the Weaponsmith to get a bit more of a mana advantage. Put out the Manifold Key. And boom, leave up the Tail's End and the Disdainful Stroke. Keep using the Claws. Unsummon my Smithy. Sure, it's fine. Not a big deal. The opponent's going to commit to milling themselves. They are going to have to resolve Jace at some point, and I plan to make that very hard. And they're still not attacking, so let's see. Let's uh, go ahead and... One, let's exile a card from your live from your graveyard. Then I'm going to sacrifice the claws so I can replay it on my turn. Because I have five mana and I do want to keep drawing mana. Just hit your negate in case you have. What's the card? Um Mission Briefing. That's a card we don't like. That's a card that well, we like it. We like it just fine. But it lets my opponent use their graveyard, is my point. Play this again. Play this again. And pass with some mana up. Keep it coming. Here comes JC boy. So let's let resolve that. See what goes to the graveyard. I don't think it changes my play, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and use the... Let's see what's better. I guess using the tail's end here. So we just gotta keep Jace off the battlefield. Our opponent has 35 cards in deck. They're not even trying to kill me, which is... I mean, I think that you should try, because you don't know. You might have to. If I just never let this Jace thing happen for you, you might have to kill me. Again, give me something that my opponent would flash back with a mission briefing, that would be good. And same deal as last turn. So we draw an extra card and another land. Got to keep the land coming. I could start bringing out Meteor Golem, but it takes the shields down, so I'm still not there yet. Maybe it doesn't quite take the shields down, but it does. It's bad enough. I'm not, I'm not there. I don't feel a need to, like, get rid of a Drowned Secrets. My opponent is kind of helping me. They're killing themselves a little. I've got a ton of mana. We could untap... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna untap Emery, make it unblockable, but <laughs> I guess that's not particularly great. Because uh, the, the thing is, if we attack with Emery, I guess the Tome of Legends, you know what? That's not bad, actually. Tome of Legends actually gets stronger and we get to mill ourselves more if Emery dies. So what's the opponent gonna do, blocker? We get a counter on our Tome. If the opponent kills it, we get another counter on the Tome. This is why this card is, like, nuts in this deck. And remember, the cost doesn't go up nearly as quickly. This is still a one-mana commander. 
because of all the artifacts on the battlefield. And we hit a Ginger Brute. Let's say go. So Brazen Borrower, I think, only has one target, and it's Jace, if Jace is ever going to come out. That looks like a good Disdainful Stroke target. Letting the opponent find their lands and their key spells doesn't sound great to me. And yeah, we're kind of cutting the legs out of their Jace deck. Let's draw a card. Exile a card. Those choices are the kind of thing that can wear somebody down. Our opponent may end up scooping because of it. What do we have down here now? There is the Ginger Brute, so we'll untap the Tome. Draw it. But we didn't have the mana to use it. Silly me. Not perfect, ladies and gentlemen. You should know that by now. Um, do we do the Emery thing again? Start here, let's draw a card. Guild Globe, sure. Draw another card. Banner, yes. Keep them coming. Just get the artifacts onto the battlefield. Our opponent's not gonna planar cleanse us this time. Grab you. We'll start the Meteor Golem shenanigans next turn. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, let's see. I guess we can make you can't be blocked. Smash. Gotta start somewhere with the damage if we're gonna win it that way. And let's say go. All right. This costs six. Very formation. Frustrating card. To be sure. Really good agent target, but so is Jace. But Jace can come out and almost win on that turn if they time it well. Let's Brazen Borrow it, just so that the opponent does have to cast it again. Hit him with the claws. Make a choice. Choices are hard, I know. And we'll sack the claws. Get me your... I guess I'll take the opt. That's something that you might mission brief to. And the draws continue. There's no escape. That's pretty great. Let's golem up. Now if we can find the witch's oven, we create the golem loop. Let's get rid of the queen of ice. It's kind of getting in my way. Hey ya. One, two, three, four, five mana available. So, what else do we do with our mana? We don't have the claws. I guess we're just saying go. We have a proliferate option, but nothing to proliferate onto. So this is just a no escape when the opponent goes for their Jace, I think. But they probably won't. They might go for the fairies. Leyline, sure. You want a flash. All right, that sounds fun. Let's let's let our opponent have flash. You got flash. I got a brazen borrower. Anything else we can do with all this stuff? Not really. Essence capture off the top. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, uh, it's probably time for beatdowns. I don't really want to trade this with that. So that can be my unblockable. Everybody else, get in. We gotta, we gotta work on getting our opponent dead now. I know, the O3, I know. I know, it's establishing dominance. It's a known tactic. Everybody knows this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This would be 15, 16. Doesn't change the clock. At least with this, there's the threat to make it bigger that the opponent should respect. But opponent not even blocking here. Blood of Tears. Hmm, I can't counter it. I can try to draw into a counter. 
negate whiff anything else I should do nope okay you did that um, Emery can go to my hand and we'll play you back out just to get keep the pressure high Can I kill my opponent? I have the Ginger Brute, which can get in there for an additional one. So I could sit here and try to figure out absolutely every little thing I could do. I don't think that is a good use of time in general. So I'm just gonna start slamming stuff. No regrets. As long as I leave up the mana for no escape at the end of it, I think I'm in a happy camper place. Wow, got land. All right, down to three. Can you get out of it? So we'll discard you and you, like things that Emery can replay. You and you. There's no escape. <laughs> Yeah. I has captured you. And that's gonna do it. Spectral Sailor will not save you now. We would put the counter on the gingerbread because the sailor can block the brazen borrower, and that should be enough. I hope that you enjoyed these games with Emery Brawl. I'm having a really great time with the deck, and I think you would too. Emery's one of my favorite commanders because the cost always seems to be low, and you get to keep replaying your favorite artifacts over and over again. So I hope you'll give it a try. Strongly recommended. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.